Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've gone just about long enough, assuming that objects don't slide on friction surfaces. Very well, Mr. Brust from the past. In fact, I still agree with you. So let's suspend that assumption for a while. I'm going to bring out a professional bowler friend to assist us in this understanding. I am a very busy lady on the professional bowler's tour, but I will take out a moment to bowl for the Deerfield High School AP Physics class so that they can learn about dynamics of a ball rolling with sliding friction. Very good, very good. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And so, let's consider some of these details. First of all, when she releases the bowling ball, it's moving at V0, initially sliding without any rolling. Therefore, that little point of contact has a motion. The ball's motion with respect to the floor at the point of contact is V0. There is no rolling. However, after a certain distance under which it's undergoing a friction arising because of, well, normal force and a non-zero mu k, we have, later on, rolling and no sliding and it's rolling at omega at this point angular velocity of omega so let's do a free body force diagram while the sliding is taking place so here we have our circle corresponding to the bowling ball mg acting straight down normal acting straight up canceling because of the normal and the mu k we have friction acting to the left and thus there's a net force accelerating the bowling ball to the left. So while sliding, we have A is sum of F over M. Sum of F is friction. So that's mu k m g. The m's go away, and we get the acceleration mu k g during that interval where the ball is sliding and spinning up because it's getting a, a, a torque to give it an angular acceleration until it arrives at omega. And there's a certain special condition when the sliding comes to it is when it ceases and it's all rolling very special condition when that takes place all right, all right. Now, now just, just write, write down, down the, the equation, equation for the linear, linear velocity, velocity of the center of mass of the ball as a function, function of time, of time. Think, think kinematics well actually let's do that so the velocity is v0 minus at We've already solved for A, so let's include that. And we have V is V0 minus mu kg times T. Hoo-hoo! That was, that was pretty easy, easy wasn't, wasn't it? it? Well, now we'll, we'll do, do the, the same, same thing, thing for, for the, the angular, angular velocity, velocity of the ball. ball. But be careful. Be Alpha is not, not equal to A over R. R. Now, what is this ghostly apparition from the past just trying to say here? Well, probably makes sense. Omega is omega 0 plus alpha T. And... We also know that the moment of inertia is 2 fifths mr squared for a solid sphere. So with that in our arsenal, let's consider the torque, which is Rf. And that's R times mu kmg, the friction, which is the net force acting on the ball, m times a, which of course is I alpha. So now we're ready to solve for angular acceleration which is torque over I. We have our torque, there it is. So R mu kmg over 2 fifths mr squared, and we have some cancellations, resulting in 5 mu kg over 2r. So omega is omega zero plus alpha times time. And finally, we have our angular velocity expression. 5 mu kg over 2r times t. Now, now when, when the, the slipping, slipping is done, done what, what is, is the, the relationship between the linear and angular, angular velocity? velocity? Go, Go ahead, ahead. Just, just write, write it, on it on the line, line below. below. Oh, come on. Oh, well, okay, sure. Let's write it down. It's that the velocity is omega r. This is the kinematic expression. When there's no slipping or sliding, then the velocity of the object rolling is equal to its angular velocity times r because omega times the radius is the linear velocity of the edge and it's that 
linear velocity of the edge, that's equal to the translational velocity of the ball. So that's all true when it's not sliding. If it's sliding, then that relationship does not hold true. Well, well let's, let's not, not waste, waste any more time, time and, and find, find out, out what, what time, time v is equal to omega r. r. Let's do that, in fact, because v, v0 minus mu kgt is v0. We solve for that, and that's equal to omega. This is omega that we just solved for times r. All right. So that's 5 mu kg over 2 times t because one of these r's go away. So it simplifies. So v0 is going to be 7 halves mu kg t. Why the 7 halves? Well, because we're taking 2 halves and adding it to the 5 halves over here. So there's our v0. And there's our time, the time at which the spin-up is done, and there's no more slipping. 2v0 over 7 mu kg. Interesting. It's inversely related to g. That makes sense. Because if g is big, then the normal force goes up, right? So then the time goes down at which that condition exists. The rotational inertia is not increased when g increases. Moreover, the time increases when the velocity, initial velocity, translational, is very large. Moreover, the time increases when this gets small, when it's a real slick surface. So all of this at least passes the common sense test. So that at least is good. Throughout the entire Throughout interval, the, entire interval, interval, the, the angular, angular momentum, momentum of the bowling, bowling ball with respect to point P remains, remains constant. constant. Try and Try explain. If, if the, the angular, angular momentum, momentum with respect to point P is going to change, change what, what must there, there be about, about point, point P for that, that to be? be. You, you see? Are you done yet? Well, actually, it's a good question. The angular momentum will only change with respect to P if there's what about P? That's right, torque. So let's look at a little diagram of this situation. So here we have the bowling ball, and there's point P. Right here is point P. And as it was sliding, we have a force. It's friction force. And guess what direction it's pointing? That line of action is pointing right to P. And there's the radius, which is D. So you know what does not happen when the line of action points through the axis of rotation? Because this is the point about which we're considering the axis of rotation. Because we're trying to figure out you know, what's changing about the angular momentum with respect to point P. So what we're seeing now is that the only force acting on the bowling ball is this friction force whose line of action goes through that pivot point. Thus, you know what that means about the angular acceleration. It's the rate at which the angular velocity changes, which is torque over I, and that torque is R cross F. But look at R and look at F. And what do they say to each other. They say, hey, I am anti-parallel to each other. And so it's df sine of pi over i. Now, this is not differential f. It's d times f sine of pi. This is just r cross f. That's all it is. r crossed with f is d times f sine of pi. They're going in opposite directions over the moment of inertia. So that is 0. Which is another way, well, to just express the fact that the moment arm of the friction is equal to zero. The friction has no moment arm. It passes right through here, so there's no perpendicular distance from P that this friction force acts. So now if we look at alpha's d omega dt, and we separate the differentials, we get integral from omega zero to omega of dw is equal to integral from t zero to t of alpha dt, alpha is equal to zero, so this whole thing is zero, meaning that the amount of angular velocity change is zero. So, oh, no, no change, change in omega, omega huh? huh? Well, I, well thought I thought that, that ball was starting, starting to spin. To spin. Seems, Seems to me to like the angular, angular velocity, velocity is changing. Is changing. Well, remember, well, remember, we're talking, we're talking about, about the angular velocity of the ball with respect, respect to point, point P. P. Not, not with respect, respect to, the to the center of mass. mass. 
perhaps now it's not quite so strange. At least I hope. So, yes, this ball has an angular velocity and it was increasing, but that's with respect to the center of mass. We're sitting here talking about with respect to P. And perhaps a way to, my last comment, to make sense of this is to consider that when the ball was first released, passing across P, it had a higher translational velocity than it does here. So you'd think, well, from that reason alone, you know, the, the, the center mass has a certain perpendicular distance, and that doesn't change across there. And it's going slower over here. So shouldn't the angular momentum with respect to point P be diminishing as it travels across here, slowing down, because this friction is slowing it down? But it's also spinning this up. And so part of the mass, like the mass out here that's further away from, the, from point P, perpendicular to P, in other words, further away than the center of mass, the material up here is, is, is moving this way faster. So that effect, along with the slower overall motion to the right, basically, well, specifically cancels out. And the angular momentum of the bowling ball never changes but it can it can uniquely be specified as such because the friction applies no torque about p therefore there's no angular acceleration there's no torque with respect to point p and the other two forces that are possible are the normal force acting up and gravity acting down and those two things cancel therefore so, so there, there it is, is. No, no torque, torque with, respect with respect to point P. P. Of, course, of course, there is there torque with respect, respect to the center of mass. mass. But, the but the bottom, bottom line, line is this, you, you gotta, gotta believe, believe in the, the conservation, conservation of angular, angular momentum. momentum. And as for my part at this point in time, I have nothing else to say.